$17 trillion, the highest level since 2008. I have all the details right here in the video, so let's get right into it. All right, now in this video, I do want to share with you some new information that was just released showing that we are now sitting over $17 trillion, which is a 15-year high that we have not seen since 2008. And do we all remember what happened in 2008? Oh yeah, the great financial crisis, a major stock market crash, a major real estate crash, and it was all accompanied by stimulus checks. Let's get into it and talk about what is going on right now and why this information is so incredibly important because it impacts all of us at the end of the day. Therefore, let's get into it. However, really fast before we do, thank you so much for joining me. If you're new here or if you haven't done so yet, please make sure to subscribe by hitting the button right down below the video as it's totally free to do so and because I am your one and only daily advocate. Not only that, because we are rapidly approaching 500,000 subscribers right here on the channel and it would mean so much to me if you hit that subscribe button down below. Also, please remember it is my dedication, my commitment, and my promise to you and everybody right here in the community to continuously do all this research and to break it all down into these short videos every single day. I'm here for you literally right by your side every single day in these videos, seven days a week, 365 days a, week, a year. If you don't believe me, go back and check out all the videos here on the channel, thousands and thousands of videos. I'm watching everything very, very closely and breaking it down into the shortest videos possible to help you out as much as I can because it's a very confusing, it's a very busy, and it's a very uncertain time that we are currently living through. So again, thanks so much for joining me. Please subscribe down below if you haven't done so yet. And let's get into it and talk about this $17 trillion. That's a ton of money, by the way. <laughs> Try to write that down. That's a little uh, piece of homework, by the way. I uh, generally don't assign homework, but I'm just saying, if you're interested to see it, write down 17 trillion. It's a crazy big number, right? So anyway, just a little side note there. I think it's kind of interesting. All right, but anyway, let me talk about this information that was released and what it all means for us and why it's actually a little bit concerning that we are at 15 year highs. The last time we saw this was in 2008, right when things were crashing, like really big time crashing, 2008. All right, so, <clears throat> excuse me. All right, so this report was just released and it now shows that in the fourth quarter of 2022, so just a few months ago and not that long ago, consumer debt increased to $17 trillion. So as a result of that, in the fourth quarter of 2022, we, the consumers, added $320 billion of debt just in the fourth quarter. So that's about a, what is that? About $107 billion. It's about $107 billion a month. Isn't that a lot? That <laughs> That's crazy. Can you imagine that? That's pretty fun, right? But not when it's coming down to debt, right? But my point is, just in the third quarter alone, we added $320 billion in debt. Now, again, we are sitting at $17 trillion. And according to this report, this is the highest level that we've seen or the last time that we've been at this level since 2008. So what does this really mean? It simply means nobody's got any money. Again, we've talked about this so many times before in other videos. It's not that hard to break down, which by the way, this $17 trillion encompasses auto loans, mortgages, credit card debt, all of this thing, consumer debt, right? So that is a pretty huge number. And again, it's a pretty scary number. Now, again, I was just out the other day in a separate video talking about credit card debt here in this country as well. And again, that's also a huge number, just under $1 trillion alone in credit card debt. And we're adding about $20 billion of credit card debt a month. Again, craziness, right? So that is a ton, a ton of um, money that's going out. And again, why are credit card balances increasing so much right now? It's because nobody has any money. Uh, nobody has any money. Therefore, they're floating balances on credit cards. And again, you know how that all goes. I described that just the other day in that other video. But the, uh, the anticipation actually goes on to show that this year alone, so 2023, here we are a couple months in already, right? So as of right now, the anticipation is that this year alone, 2023, we're going to add nearly another $1.3 trillion dollars in consumer debt just this year. Again, mortgages, auto loans, credit cards, um, things like this. Again, that is what it's coming down to. So they're anticipating that. Why? Why do they anticipate we're going to spend and rack up another $1.3 trillion in debt this year? Consumer debt. Why would they be saying that about us? Here's why. 
Again, prices continue to increase. We already seen it from the uh, the inflation data that was just released a couple weeks ago that we've seen it that, um, yeah, prices are still rap are rapidly rising. Food prices are rapidly rising. Rent prices are rapidly rising. Healthcare costs are rapidly rising. And maybe we're seeing a little bit of a reprieve on um, uh, uh, used car prices, airline tickets, and other you know things like that that none of us really buy for the most part. Maybe every so often, but for the most part, we don't buy the things. But either way, this is what it's coming down to. And again, incomes are not keeping up with the uh, the increases in price. Therefore, again, people floating balances on credit cards. And again, the same old song and dance that we've talked about so many times before in other videos. So this is very concerning, especially the alignment of this consumer debt going back to 2008. I think we all remember that, right? 2008 at the time was kind of a bad situation, right? I remember that time and it was like, wow, the unemployment rate was going up. A lot of people were losing their jobs. The stock market was going like straight down. Tons of people were losing their homes to foreclosure. It was a sad situation, right? Evictions were through the roof. It was a bad, bad time. A lot of people were struggling in a big, big way because again, we just had way too much debt. People had no money. Um, the, the incomes were not keeping up with real cost of living during that time. And the whole thing just derailed. The big old train cruising on the tracks, it just derailed. And again, that's what happened. So kind of the same situation that we are playing out right here, right now. We are all watching this whole thing coming forward. Now, like I said a couple minutes ago at the beginning of this video, that back in 2008 was accompanied by stimulus checks. Remember that? Back in the day in 2008, they passed about $900 billion dollars in the form of a stimulus package. Now, again, we think of it today and think, wow, $900 billion, that's it? Because today, all the packages that they're doing now are in the trillions. But then in 2008, yes, they did pass about an, a $900 billion stimulus package. And it did also contain $600 stimulus checks. Do you remember that one? I do. Uh, so anyway, that also went out in 2008. They sent out those uh, stimulus checks. Now, another quick side note as well. In 2009, in May of 2009, they also did send out stimulus checks specifically focused on uh, the fixed income beneficiaries. So that is something they also did as well. So I know I've talked about that a lot before in other videos where, you know, maybe there's a time where they come to their senses and realize, hey, maybe we should send out some kind of check or some type of additional financial assistance just for fixed income beneficiaries. They've done it before in May of 2009. So um, I want to bring this to your attention because this is something we've got to watch closely. Now, again, if you've been watching the videos here on the channel for any length of time now, you know that I'm the type of person that I like to watch these types of statistics because uh, this is like painting a very clear picture right now. And again, it's all based on uh, kind of like timing and it's all based on predictability, right? It's just like history. History always repeats itself. I know we always see the things out there where some people come out and say, history never repeats itself. Uh, yeah, when it comes to the economy, when it comes to the stock market, when it comes to the natural uh, ebb and flow of the cycles of the economy and you know the markets and things like that, yes, they do pretty much mirror themselves. The the flows and the things that happen in the economy, the cycles throughout the economy, the business cycles, the economic cycles, they do repeat. Um, generally, it's about an eight-year cycle or so, give or take a little bit. But again, they do repeat. And again, why would it be any different this time? It's not going to be. So anyway, I like to watch this stuff very, very closely. And I like to bring it to your attention here in the video so that we can all be on the same page here. And if you've been watching the videos for any length of time, like, I don't know, three months, four months, six months, a year, two years, something like that, you've seen me come back with reports like this. And you've seen these numbers get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Every single quarter, these numbers continue to get bigger. Is that sustainable? No, right? Let's just think of it on a personal level really, really quickly here. And then we'll let you go, which is, let's just say that we have a credit card and we go out to the stores and we put some money on the credit card. We can't pay it off. Next month, we come by, put some more money on the credit card. We can't pay it off. Next month comes by, put some more money on the credit card and we can't pay it off. It keeps going on and on and on. At some point, do we feel like, wow, we've racked up a ton of debt right here. This is completely unsustainable. We've got to do something about this, right? It's just not realistic. It just does not work that way. Eventually, we get to the point where it's like critical mass, where it's like, uh-oh, we've got to do something about this now. That's where we're getting to, right? So we're getting to that point. And actually, I've been reading a lot about this recently as well, which is some of these high-profile people have been coming out saying, at what point is this thing going to break? Um, this, this system is not set up for this. People cannot sustain this much debt and these levels of debt uh, like what we're seeing right now for much longer. People are basically saying, 
All the savings that consumers have is gone. There's only a very small percentage of people that actually have any savings left right now. Most people are living paycheck to paycheck. A lot of people are um, you know, floating balances and credit cards, borrowing from friends and family, taking out personal loans. Again, they're simply saying this is not sustainable. This does not go on for very long until you see this whole thing collapse onto itself. So again, I just like to bring this to your attention so we can see what's going on out there. And in the event of an economic, you know, crash or recession or contraction, whatever we want to call it, it's all essentially the exact same thing. Um, you know, we'll have to watch and see what happens here. But in those events, Congress does like to come forward and pass huge, huge packages to revitalize the economy. But we'll have to cross that bridge when we get there. And of course, I'll continue watching everything closely. So hope this one helps you out. Again, I like to keep an eye on these things just to see what's going on out there. And, you know, we got to watch all this because it's going to impact us in some way, shape or form. Ultimately, therefore, we probably want to pay attention to it, right? We always got to know what's going to impact us. Anyway, I'm here for you as much as I can be. Please make sure to subscribe down below if you haven't done so yet. Share the video with your friends, family, social media, and go back and check out any of the other thousands of videos here on the channel. Until next time, enjoy your day, take care, and I'll see you guys.